Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about networking. What do you do? How do you do it? Why does it benefit you? If you're in business, a small business, window cleaning especially, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. This show is almost six years old every single week. There is tons of episodes for you to catch up on. It's everywhere podcasts are. If you don't find it, tell me and I will make sure it's there. It's also on YouTube. If you want to play it in the background, I have more of a face for radio, but um, but yeah, it's on all different platforms. So definitely check it out. Binge away and shameless plug of the day. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. I sell things and I'm an account rep, an account specialist. I want to be your executive account person. I want to be your rep, your person in your back pocket. So please do let me put all your orders in. And if you got questions, I want to be your homie. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. I'm the only jersey you know. Uh, let me know what I can do for you. I love putting orders in. Thank you to all of you who let me put all your orders in. I absolutely appreciate it. Uh, all you have to do is click that save this cart in checkout and then text me. I can see it. Do the rest. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, if you didn't know, uh, America Window Cleaner Magazine is out there. It's been around since 1986. It's gone through a ton of changes. It's full color. comes out every month. Custom window cleaning stickers for your buckets, for your uh, bucket on a belt, for anything you want to put it on. Uh, it's absolutely amazing and it helps support the industry. So if you're nerding out watching or listening to a podcast, you got to go get the magazine. I mean, come on. It's a no-brainer, right? AWCMAG.com. Go and search The American Window Cleaner Magazine and uh, get a subscription. By the way, on a side note, uh, I started a YouTube channel a while ago, and this is always posted on WCRs, but my content is out on my own YouTube channel, uh, WCR Nation, uh, Jersey WCR Nation. Uh, so search that, find it, and subscribe, because that would mean a lot. Anywho, uh, so today we are talking about networking, and uh, networking is one of those things that is absolutely amazing, that it should be so simple. We should all just understand, but you kind of don't sometimes, right? The problem in networking is, is that if you've ever tried to, you know, pull up to a window cleaner in your city and uh, you pull up in your window cleaning vehicle and they can see and you walk up there, they just think you're trying to like steal their work or something. It's a very, very odd situation. There's a way to do it, obviously. But then you're like, well, in networking, I don't talk to the people. We're all enemies. Like we just don't like each other or maybe we're not enemies, but we just don't talk. That's not necessarily networking. Networking in your area is amazing when you can do it. And I'll tell you, as a full disclosure, in all of my area, my coverage area, I knew every window cleaner and every window cleaner knew me. I made it a point to find them, say, hey, what's up? Introduce myself. If they ever need anything, oh, man. I'm, I wanted them to feel comfortable. There were two companies that did not care for me. And it was because I was the new guy when they were around forever. One man shows that just kind of, you know, they were in their like 40th year or something, right? Well, I was the new guy and they were like, uh, he's taking our jobs. And then, you know, they didn't talk to me. And that's cool. I don't need to necessarily talk to everybody, but everybody that I possibly could, especially newer companies, guys that I've never seen before stuff. Hey man, I've never seen you before. What's up? My name's Jersey. I own this company, blah, 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 man. It's nice to see you in the area. Right? I always invited people back to my shop. I always invited people out to lunch and just to talk and network. And that's in-person networking. It's super, super valuable. But networking in general can be global. You can network with people in other countries. You can network with people on Facebook and TikTok and LinkedIn and all those other places that I have to have social media. You could network everywhere. And networking itself is super just valuable. Valuable. When I started, this makes me sound old, but when I started, um, there were no forums. Facebook wasn't even a thing. Um, there were no groups. There was one email 
thing. I forget what they call it, a email chain or something. For, anyway, what it was was Gary Maurer. Uh, you guys probably know that name. He was the OG for networking. Awesome. He also had a picnic every year, which was all window cleaners. Amazing. Uh, absolutely opened my eyes to that. Uh, but what you would do is you would send an email with a question. It would send it to everybody on this list. And then if you wanted to respond, you had to forward and and reply all. And that's how it was. It was like a forum, just a really slow motion forum in all emails. And then you had to read all the emails, try to see where the blocks were, if people didn't do it right. It's, it was what existed at the time, but it was a pain in the butt, right? So networking was super, super hard on a bigger platform. Now, there's so many things out there. You could be friends with your neighbor. You could be friends with somebody that's super far away, right? So networking is absolutely amazing. And uh, let's go over a few things that makes it so awesome. First off is your competition. Again, that's the hard one. If you just pull up and like, hey, I'm a window cleaner. And they're cleaning windows. They're like, oh, this guy's going to walk in. Like, right? It's instinctive to kind of feel a little bit um, protective about the accounts you work so hard to get. But with other window cleaners, you can go and say hi, you can go and introduce yourself and, and be absolutely personable without making them feel uncomfortable, right? It's the same thing as, you know, dating. There's a way that you can do it to make everybody feel comfortable and there's a way that you can do it to make everybody feel uncomfortable. Same thing with this, right? But your competition is absolutely amazing to network with. The first thing is, is that if you network well with your competition, you're going to have somebody that can help you with jobs if you need it or that you can help with jobs if needed. There's also tons of jobs that you'll both be bidding on, right, that you could talk about. There's also a ton of things in the area for competitions and, and for um, uh, giveaways and, 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 and sponsorships and all those things where you're not wanting to step on each other's toes. But you have to do it right. Understand there's enough glass for everybody. Absolutely. Every house that has ever been built has windows. Every commercial property that has a storefront has windows. There's more windows than you or I could ever clean in our lifetime. There's tons of windows out there. That's not the problem. If somebody comes in and they're like, oh, they're going to they're gonna lowball and take everything. Well, you didn't tell your value. If you're scared of price, then that's all price. The only thing that they're looking at is price right? So don't be scared of competition, but there's a lot of valuable things. I loved talking to local window cleaners or people in my area because those are the people who I could really, really rely on for physical things, physical help, right? I had uh, one guy one time, I've borrowed water fed poles. I didn't have a water fed pole that even reached this building. I got to the property. It didn't work. I gave a call. A guy was like 45 minutes away. He was like, yeah, come pick it up, man. Picked it up, used it, brought it back, right? I've bought and used gear off guys. I have purchased businesses because of networking locally, right? If you're the guy that they know in the area, they see you all over, you're super friendly, you're nice. When it comes time for them to retire or just get out of the game, they're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to call Jersey. He's always been super cool. Let's see what he wants to do. I'll give him first crack at it, right? More companies, I've purchased more companies in that, in my town that I bet any other window cleaner company has. I've even been given companies, if you believe that. Uh, this guy was uh, a window cleaner and lawn care and he decided he wanted to get into lawn care exclusively. Uh, I met him a bunch of times. He said, hey man, can I stop by? I said, yeah. He showed up, you guys might have heard the story and he just was like, dude, I want out and uh, I know you'll take good care of my customers, I just wanna give it to you. I said, oh man, what do you want for it? He's like, no, no, I just like, give you everything, my list and everything. He kept his equipment like he didn't have too terribly much. And it wasn't a big, it wasn't like, you know, he gave me a million dollar company. But it was all because we had a relationship. We networked. It's absolutely invaluable. I've also had guys where um, we had the flu one time and I was like four guys short on this job. I mean, literally everybody was sick, it felt like. And uh, I called up this other company and they were like, yeah, actually, um, you know, we're getting done today at, I think it was like 2 or 2.30. We we're just going to have the trucks done or whatever. I said, like, can you send me some guys, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, we worked all night uh, until it got dark, middle of summer. 
um, and uh, got the project done. It was all because of that. I've had uh, guys where they've called me and they said, hey, man, I got this project. It's way bigger than we can do. Can you do it? I'll sub it to you. I've subbed route jobs from local guys. I have um, um, done uh, lift transfers where um, there was a lift uh, across the street on this project. We did this complex where um, the property if it's itself had a couple different property management companies, but it was one project. They ended up getting half the project, a little less than half. I ended up getting more than half on the other side. Well, they got a lift. And uh, we're like, man, you got that lift? That's so rad. They were like, yeah, we're done, man. That was day one. If you want it, we have it uh, day two just in case. And we used their lift because it was there. It was already paid for. So it's pretty cool. I mean, there's things you can kind of transfer and, and do and, and help. And, and local competition networking is really, really valuable. But it has to be done right. Just be kind and understand that you're all in the same area, right? You're not dogs uh, in somebody's yard. It's hard to kind of you know, be friends. The other side of that is events. That is the dog park, right? If you go to the huge convention, which this isn't a plug for, but I'll be there. That is in Nashville this year, August, I think. Uh, that is a huge event. Uh, it has uh, pressure washing and window cleaning. We'll be there. Uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine will be there. Um, a bunch of us reps will be there. It's just a super cool time to like shake hands and see people face to face. But that is the dog park. That is the cream of the crop in the networking world. When you go to an event, A, you don't deal with keyboard cowboys, right? You don't deal with those people. You ask a question and everybody jumps in. Yeah, you stupid. Like no one would say that to you in real life, usually. So that's the first thing. You can literally talk to people like, what do you charge per window? And they'll tell you because it's a dog park. They're, you're not sitting in each other's yard. If you go up to somebody who's cleaning windows in your neighborhood and be like, hey, man, I also work here in this same town. What do you charge per window? They're like, what? I'm not telling you, right? At an event, it's all, all open and fair game. Events are really, really cool. Plus, it's a write-off, which is really, really cool. If you want a trip, trip to Nashville for uh, a write-off. Um, and they are exhausting events because you're getting so much information. You're talking so much. You're listening, hopefully, so much. It's mentally draining, but absolutely worth it. And I'll give you a secret with shows and events and things like that. I think that there's value in classes, I do, but I don't think the ultimate value is in the classes. The ultimate value is, say the huge, you are in a room or a lobby or a bar or the conference center or every restaurant you go, somebody's got a shirt on that they're the same thing. You have the possibility to be in a room with 1,500 people that do the exact same thing as you. The value is not as much classes. Those are awesome. That's like fills the day, right? The most value I've ever gotten was in bars, restaurants, IHOP, 7.30 in the morning, talking to some guy right? They see you. They're like, oh, can I have a seat? Yeah, sit down. How many times have you had this meal with 20 people at the table? You're just talking. That's the part where you learn so many little things you never thought you knew. When I first started going to conventions again, this is like the only show at the time was the international window cleaning window, IWCA show. That was, uh, that was the first like convention. And uh, I would go to that, um, and I was too cheap, too new, and too poor to do it absolutely right. So I was a floor crasher. People knew me uh, as doing that. Uh, thank you to George uh, Aguilar, uh, Diego Garcia, all those guys, man. I slept on their floor probably five years, six years. It's amazing. Um, that was we did that in New Orleans. We did that in, in all the IWCA conventions. It was absolutely amazing. At the time, I could sleep on the floor and stand all day and not be an old man. But anyway, I digress. I did it cheap because of the value. And I didn't actually even pay to go to the show for the first like year, two years maybe. And that was because, again, I was poor and cheap and just didn't get it. But I went because of the networking. And I'll tell you, uh, probably three or four years into it, um, probably not even that long, 
I was at a bar with a guy, right? So everybody meets at bars and my wife still always jokes about the whole networking means going and drinking. I don't drink myself, but uh, no reason you shouldn't or can't. But what it is is the networking is where it is. So we're just chilling, hanging out, let's talk. That's where networking really does, right? You're sitting on a, a bar on the beach, right? When it was in Florida. How awesome is that? Everybody's talking things because we know what we have in common. I learned about plastic gift cards in passing by somebody else. This was, I mean, 15 plus years ago. Somebody said, um, we're talking and they're talking. I go, yeah, you know, and we, we had... Uh, we had done this um, um, thing, you know, and, and we were out of business cards, so we just gave them our gift cards. I was like, gift cards? Like, we can do that? It's like, oh, yeah, And they kind of explained what a gift card was, right? And then I took that and tweaked it to kind of what we know the gift cards are now, at least what I talk about, where we give them out as business cards. We give them to everybody, right? They're, they're just a, a, a business card that has value. But at the time, it was absolutely new to me. I went home, implemented business uh, plastic gift cards, and in that first year, probably did, you know, five to ten thousand dollars worth of like new work just from those cards. So that one thing that I heard about when we were talking about something completely different at the show made me another ten thousand dollars. That paid for my trip, obviously, right? And then as we tweaked, it's made more and more and more, and it's done that every single year since then. The big thing about events is that you can pick stuff up and you're face-to-face -face doing nothing but talking about what you do. It's absolutely amazing. If you, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, go to an event. Go to an event just for everything else. Yeah, there's a trade show. Yeah, you could buy equipment. There's classes, but just to be around the people, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, and by the way, if you're at the show this year in Nashville, Make sure to say what's up, even if you're just yelling, uh, hey, Jersey, you know, people sometimes are like, oh, you're so busy talking that I couldn't say hi. Just say hi, man. Say hi. Uh, that's one of my pet peeves. People are like, oh, I saw you, but I didn't say hi. I'm like, dad, you could have just like screamed and I would have been like, hey, what's up? Uh, I love to like see people because I talk to people all day long, but don't see them in person, obviously. So anyway, uh, say what's up. That's all I'm saying. Uh, another way to network is on social media, right? So we have Facebook now, which has groups, and there's Pro Window Cleaning and Pro Window Cleaning 2.0 and 30 other window cleaning and pressure washing groups. Now, I will start by saying this. The problem with the internet is that everybody has a voice. Not everybody deserves a voice. <laughs> I'm a guy, a, a dummy who sits in front of a... a, a backdrop in front of my computer once a week and talk so i shouldn't i don't have anything to say i'm not special by any means i'm just some guy who posts things right but there are some people who like to be vocal they like to be mean and they like to give misinformation or there are people who have been doing it this way forever and they give misinformation like the whole you can't use scrapers on tempered glass that that thing is a myth that was made up from the internet because so many people start talking about it, they hear it somewhere and then they regurgitate it and no one understands it's completely BS. It's completely wrong, right? There's a lot of that stuff. There is a lot of that stuff there. The number one thing that I get when people ask about water fed and they're on the fence is they're like, ah, I heard it, this doesn't work. That's again the internet. People who don't own water fed systems who go, this doesn't work. You've never, ever, ever met somebody who's had a water-fed system and has actually used it. Because if you use it one time, you're like, this thing's stupid. It's because you didn't figure it out. Like That's like getting a squeegee for the first time and going, this is broken. No, you have to get better at it. But there's not anybody out there who's used a water-fed pole for six months every single day and went, yeah, this is stupid. Now I'm going back. It's a tool. You're still going to use it for part of it. But not any one person ever has backed out of water-fed like that, ever. It just has not happened if you've given it enough time to get proficient at it. But the loudest people in any conversation are usually the wrong ones, right? So that's, look at the, some of these weird theories that are out there. The earth is flat and uh, we didn't go to the moon and all this other stuff. The people who argue that are the loudest, right? Because they're convincing themselves just like they're convincing you. If you came to me and you're like, yeah, like, 
you you never cleaned windows. I'm like, okay, cool. I would walk away from the conversation. I don't have to be loud. I know the facts. I know that you don't know the facts, obviously. But you're going to keep fighting that fact because you think so. The quietest guy in the conversation is always right. Right? So that's the problem with social media. So take it with a grain of salt. I understand the irony of me being on social media. By the way, I'm on TikTok and LinkedIn and everywhere else. You should follow me everywhere because that would be awesome. We could be friends. Um, but I get the irony. But just be careful on social media. Go into a group. Read everything there is in the group. Search bars on everything. Find questions. Just ask those questions in the search bar first. And then go in. The problem where people get angry and you're like, I'll never ask a question. Screw those people. It's because somebody jumps in and goes, hey, I'm new. Usually, uh, usually uh, younger, right? That's not a dig on the younger people, but just look at it. And they come in, they're like, hey, I'm starting a window cleaning company. What would you guys charge for a window? And what kind of squeegee is best? And they ask the most general basic questions because they've done no research themselves. And it just ticks off people who are trying to help. But if you've done research, you've looked at it yourself, you've done everything, you know in your area, it's like, okay, well, I know that I'm charging $750 a pain residential in and out. And you jump on the forum and you go in and go, hey, so here's a project, here's a couple windows that I have. Uh, I think I'm gonna be at $750 per pane per side, right? I know that's what it is, but I know these are pellet clips, or I see that these millions come out and uh, in a project like this, would you guys charge extra? And uh, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think is a fair price to charge extra to remove the mullion? If you asked that question, which shows you've done your research, you've, you've looked at some things, you're not looking just to be fed something, you're just looking for genuine help, I guarantee you not one person will give you a crap answer. Everybody who answers you will be absolutely legit, serious, and loving to help. But if you walk in and you're like, hey, I got a house, got five windows, what would you charge? Like you've done no research and that's not enough information. Those are the people who are like, hire a professional window cleaner. You shouldn't be doing this, blah, blah. All those people who are like, oh man, they're ripping the guy down. It's not that they're ripping him down for asking a question. It's because he asked the wrong question. So look that in. Anyway, social media. The biggest thing though is to listen. A problem people have is people like to talk, really like to talk. And if you're not the one that listens, then you're at fault. You're not learning if you're not listening. If I just talk, for, for this 30 minutes that we, we hang out, right? You may not learn anything. You know a heck of a lot. Maybe you pick something up. Maybe it's awesome. High five. Thank you for um, letting me help in any way. But I, because I've done the talking for 30 minutes, have not learned anything. You cannot teach yourself something by just talking. Right? You can teach yourself by doing or trying or examples or failures. But just talking does not teach you anything. Right? So you have to understand you have two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. If you're in a group of people and you are the most successful or the, um, the most knowledgeable or the fill in the blank, you're in the wrong room. There are always people who think that they are the know-it-all, they're the person, I know everything I was. They want to talk to all those new people because they want to be seen on this. Uh, come hither around, let me tell you how to do this. There are people like that, but they're not learning anything. Listen more than you talk. That's a big thing, by the way, um, that you see a lot of people do, is they just talk. And they, they won't be convinced. If you say anything... Sweet. Let me tell you what I do. You tell me if you agree. So you, you, I do private coaching. And we talk 30, uh, the coaching program is 30 minutes. Every week we have a dedicated call, same time. It's just me and, me and you. It's all about your business. What we talked about last week, the things we're changing, right? What, what can we do to achieve this goal or this pain point or fix or do right that is mainly what we do but there's a lot of times where we're like oh what do you think we should do on this and i'll be like well i think this and the person goes okay well i was thinking this we have different sides cool well tell me why you think that would work 
I'm going to listen because I'm not always right and you're not always right. The point is you have to listen to somebody else. That's why networking works is because you can listen to other people. Networking works just like coaching works is because you can bounce ideas off of people. That is the benefit to networking. If you just talk, you're not networking. You're just speaking, right? So listen more than you learn. Listen more than you talk. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that is uh, amazing uh, on that is that you learn and then that turns into teaching. And that is counteractive, co contradictory of what I just said, kind of. But eventually, you know so many things that somebody may ask you. I still remember. The first time somebody asked me to talk, I don't know about this, and I was like, oh, actually, I had that happen. This is kind of what I did. It really worked. They're like, oh, man. Like literally two weeks later, the guy found me, uh, emailed me, or called me. I don't remember. But he's like, dude, that was amazing, man. That, that, that was it. That fixed it, dude. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say, I got to do what I did for a long time. I don't know everything. Absolutely do not know everything. I'm immersed in this industry every day. Every day I'm talking to window cleaners. I've talked to more window cleaners in this country than anybody else, any other human I bet out there. I talk to people every day. I coach businesses that have been around longer than my business was. The benefit to it is the back and forth. It is not that you're always right. I need to learn something from this person. And I get a well, there is none of that. I always tell people, I don't know everything. I'm just some guy. If anybody out there says, this is how you do that, don't listen to them because it's, that's wrong. You, they would say, hey, this is how I did that. Maybe you can learn from that. Eventually, your learning stuff allows you to maybe tell somebody else. You may be able to help somebody else. Maybe you're at one of these conferences and in a conversation, you help somebody. I get to do that every day with you guys. Not all of you get something from this, but a lot of you pick up little things, or even if it's a refresher, or even if it's an eye-opening something. I'm lucky enough to be able to help you. I'm lucky enough to be able to do coaching and help individual companies on their own. Blow up, double. I, how many companies have doubled in the time we've talked? It's phenomenal. I get to do that, and I feel like it's part of it is because I've listened for so long that I then get to do that. So in networking, you only learn when you listen, but eventually you get to then help, right? Never stop listening, but when you get to the point, you may be able to help. Don't be those people out there who only do it one way and only want to talk and only want to tell everybody how they do it. Understand we're all in the same industry. You didn't discover window cleaning because you're sitting in a room of 1,500 window cleaners that are all making about what you make an hour. We've all done it, we've all been there. There's super successful people out there. Super, super successful people. I got a guy that I talk with who is increasing his company this year by $780,000. He's increasing his company. He's adding services and uh, potentially scooping up a company. But he's increasing his company that big. This is a multi-million dollar company. This stuff is phenomenal, right? There's so many things out there and so many people who know things that you get to learn from in networking. Maybe something that you learn or pick up somewhere, maybe something you transfer somebody else, but that's part of the fun of networking. If you don't network and you don't listen and you don't meet people and you don't get out of this, this bubble that you're not letting yourself talk to somebody, you're going to miss out on all of that. You're going to miss out on all of that. All of the things that even I talk about. Eventually, at one point, I didn't do. I tried. It really worked well. I went, whoa, try a dentist clothes. The dentist clothes alone, of all the dumb little things that I have made up in all my years, that dentist clothes has made people millions of dollars across all of these companies. That one little idea that shared with somebody helped those people. That's networking. Networking is that kind of thing where we can move information. And doing it right is absolutely more valuable than almost anything else you'll do.
but you got to do it right. And I'll tell you, you have to get out of this bubble where I'm like, oh, I'm too nervous. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't have anything to offer. Of course you don't. You don't have to have something to offer. Maybe you started window cleaning this week. Don't go to somebody to have them just tell you everything, but go to somebody and open a conversation up. Have a conversation because guess what? Maybe that other person you're talking to is at the point where he's learned a lot and he may have a chance to teach you something or help you. You might make his day. So anyway, there you go. Networking is networking, man. It is so absolutely valuable. Hopefully, again, not a plug for the huge convention, but it's coming up in like August, Nashville, super rad. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get this done. But anybody who's listening right now, if you're on YouTube, I want to see how many people heard what I'm about to tell you. Um, but the word is going to be party. Um, we may, we've been trying to do this and it is coming out of the wire and probably not going to happen, but we may be having a private exclusive private party with Steve-O and I. I don't know yet. Anyway, uh, if you heard this part, uh, just comment on YouTube, put party. And uh, by the way, if you're on YouTube, search me out. Uh, my YouTube channel, I started a series. It's like three or four minute long videos. They're super awesome. It's just a green screen, quick information, super fun stuff. Please go watch those videos and subscribe. Follow me every social media thing you possibly can. If you want to watch dumb window cleaning videos on TikTok, I'm there. Go to TikTok, search me. Um, I'm also a rep for windowcleaner.com. Remember, that's how I make money. I get people weekly ask about Patreon. I don't do Patreon, but I do put orders in. And if I put your order in, it costs you nothing extra, not a dollar extra. Instead of hitting the checkout and doing that all yourself, you hit save my save this cart and I do the rest for you. And by doing that, I get credit for the sale. You've given me some cheddar and I can go buy name brand things. For real. Do you know how much hair gel costs? Whew. Anyway. So go do that and get yourself a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's the American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Get it. It is an absolute uh, love project. Super great writers, super awesome articles, something to read on the toilet. You have posters, pictures, stickers. Go do that. And it's like 69 bucks a year. Just go to awcmag.com. Get it because you're awesome and uh, I would appreciate it. So until next week, go out there and make sure you're networking. Uh, get your huge convention tickets if you're not. Talk to somebody. Network. But more importantly, go out there and be epic. <laughs>